right, as soon as Naya is ready. Let me know when you're ready, Naya. I'm ready. Okay, let me pull the Skype back up. Okay, so we're recording once again. Hey. <laughs> so, Megan... My, I don't get away without technical difficulties, I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> that you, said that in, you said that in your video that uh, something will prevent us from having an easy time at this. The powers that be don't want us want people to know about this stuff. Oh, but, they definitely don't. I mean, it, and it's so funny because I was listening to Naya's stuff about um, just the government and um, reptilians and things like that. And it's it's so funny because to these people that they would take that video down. So when I watched it, Naya, that is not anything that was new information to me. Mm -hmm. And then for, the, for people to take it down and really think that these are so implausible theories or they're so like that the idea is so crazy out there just kind of blew my mind that they would do that. <laughs> so I, I got, it certainly blew my mind, although I took it as a huge compliment. I mean, I've been banned around the world. Right. That's going to be amazing for little old me. <laughs> <laughs> From the comfort of your own home. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, so I thought that that was very interesting. Um, she, what were you talking about? You, had, you talk a lot about, and I think, G-Man, you do the NDE stuff, so... Um, I can't say I've had near deaths, but they were, um, one was a swine flu when I was pregnant and then the other one was, um, almost drowning when I was little and that I don't really remember so much of, but I feel like very common with the ND community was that you're supposed to come back and give, give accounts of those, you know, what you saw on the other side, if you saw something, but I've been to the other side and, um, you know, I like it a lot better there, but <laughs> it, yeah, me too. It's a little, it's a little bit, um, you know, I was there and, um, I, I fly 24 seven. So I don't, um, I don't allow myself to astral project because I don't, uh, or not astral project, just do it often because, um, I know what's on the other side. It's very, very pleasant. But, um, if I could astral project all the time, I, I would, um, because being down here is very, very hard as a, a high vibrational so I would, um, um, but she cut now. Uh, she cut out with you, Naya. I've watched a lot of the video, so I got a question for uh, oh, it's freezing up. Yeah, yeah, I lost your video for a second, it's still gone. <laughs> I tell you, the that. So I, right now we just got your voice. Maybe it'll come back. But here's a question for you and for Naya. Oh, there you go. Let me get you okay. back in here. So both of you know Rich Lop. So tell me, Megan, how did you meet Rich Lop, and how do you uh, connect with him and resonate with him? Um. Well, I was doing um, an Aquarius. I kind of wanted to do an Aquarius just because we're in the age of Aquarius. And Aquarius is so misunderstood. And, you know, you're talking about self-worth issues and things like that. And I really wanted to explain, you know, why Aquarius is the way that we are. So um, I went and I uh, I was just kind of Googling. And I, I ran into one of his videos, one of the ones that had um, gotten really high ratings. And it was just... Um, it was so funny because I, I thought collectively. So I just started watching his videos a little bit. And um, when I was watching his videos, he, uh, I felt like I was listening to myself talk to the collective. <laughs> and I was commenting, and, you know, he'd like every once in a while some of my comments. But then I said um, he had a video, and he started it off, and he goes, it's February 5th. Um, it is my birthday today. I'm 30 years old. And I just messaged him, and I go, I don't meet people in our deacon, like, hardly at all. So, um, which the deacon is should be the first through the ninth. Um we're a very special deacon because this this form of Aquarius, there's uh, the Dolphinaris constellation, is the bridge between um, air and breathing water. So uh, we basically connect down the logic and the emotion. Um, so it was just very funny because I felt like I was, you know, listening to him, and I go, "My birthday, buddy," you know. And he um, he ended up we ended up starting talking. We um, added each other on Facebook, and then he led me to Naya's page. So it was really really hilarious and. I do more of like the spiritual kind of stuff than he does, but we both have like an Aquarius page or spot on our thing for um, Aquarius to come because I feel like so many Aquariuses just haven't been heard um, for a really long time or not recognized and just misunderstood. And, and uh, it was just funny because me and Rich are like, why? We're so 
straightforward. Like, <laughs> how can how can we be so misunderstood? Or like, um, there's just so funny concepts. Like Aquarius makes up their mind and then they stick to their decisions, and then people get confused by it. I don't know what it is. Um, so. It, it, it was just really funny. So we kind of connect more on like a lighter kind of level. Whereas with Naya, I kind of felt like with you, you have all that spiritual stuff. Um, I've, you know, while everybody else was out partying or everybody else was out um, watching the magic box in their living room, I was researching. So um, I really like the stuff that you came up with the government. Um, but I, I don't understand why it was taken down. I mean, it's, it's, one, it's truth, so I can understand that. But for people to just think that that was so out there really kind of scared me for a second. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it was very funny. Um, very scary. So I think Divine Feminine's here to bring out truth. And if you're around Divine Feminine energy right now, um, truth has no choice but to be brought up around it. Because it's like you said, it's a tidal wave of energy that's coming right now. And um, the second, you know, you, you're going to be naughty or you're going to have bad behavior, you're going to get slapped right away so <laughs> yep. there is no there is no this is pretty much one or the other you're either going to ride it or you're going to be beat up yeah one or the I, other and i've told everybody i said i suggest strongly that you go with the flow that you just let this stuff just go right on by you because if you fight it you think it's been tough so far you ain't seen nothing uh -huh. no nope, it's you ain't seen nothing because this is not an option Gaia is saying this is not an option. This isn't me. This isn't you. This is Gaia's decision, and she always wins. It's karma. She puts her foot down. She always wins. And that's the reason why it was kind of a shocker. I went, really? Okay. Well, I'm good with it. I'm totally good with it. And I'm kind of surprised they got to this timeline. I really thought it was going to be uh, at least a month or two later, but the timing is perfect as it always is. So I just wasn't. Hey, I just, it was just a surprise. It was just a surprise. But and yeah, she's, she is not playing on this one. This no. is, she is not playing. No, I went, well, I, good. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, my friends are not my friends, just kind of everybody around me sees it too. And, and it's funny because I, I run into so many people and I, it's, um, I have a thing. So my, my, I have, my second cousin is from, you know, the show Bewitched. Uh huh. Elizabeth Montgomery. She's my cousin. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, so at work, I because I was really honestly, I was supposed to go into um, acting. I know that very strongly, or the military, and I feel like I would have been misused in both. Um, so uh, with the military or with the acting, and I'm glad that I stayed away from it. And certain things led me on a timeline that was different. So, um, but it was just funny because I kept saying I feel a little bit like Samantha from Bewitched because she's not supposed to use her powers. And it's so funny because before when that would happen, it would really scare people. But the longer they're around it, they see the magic and then they want it, you know? Yes, so, exactly. Um, it was funny because I've had just even my coworkers too, I'll be around them and I'll telepathically read them and answer a question they hadn't asked or things like that. And then I'm like, oh, I use my powers again. Oh, no, she's going to tell my boss, you know, and all these things. But it's so funny because even even um, with people who are non-believers around you, when you just surround yourself with truth. Um, you know, they start to see that the magic isn't scary and that you shouldn't be fearful of really anything here. I mean, there's a lot of different entities here. They're very weak. Um, like as far as certain low level entities are very weak. Um, they've just had the power for a long time and, and kept people in the fear. Yeah. So, yeah. And there, uh, there's none of them that we can't deal with. We're way power, more powerful than all of them. All you gotta do is say, go away. It's easy. But the thing that drew me to you and then Rich start, because I talked to Rich way before he started the Aquarius thing. As a matter of fact, he wasn't talking. And then I talked to him and I said, why are you not talking? Get on YouTube. <laughs> I'm so proud of him. Yeah. Because you've got so much you you know. Don't don't hide. So I'm so proud of what he's done. I'm so he's very smart. Yeah, he, he's done a lot of research, too. So that's why we, we kind of collaborate or we'll throw ideas at each other or things like that. Um, our pages are definitely different. But, um, yeah, it was just, and, and my whole thing here has just been helping people realize their gifts. I have a friend, she has a um, blog. She just started, I really pushed her, and she, she, you know, those people that just go, why would anyone want to hear what I have to say? It's like, everybody wants to hear what you have to say. Like, everybody wants to see your gifts. You're not just a hard worker. You're, you know, you're probably intuitive. You're probably, you know, you have all these other gifts that you bring to the earth, so... Um, yeah, I'm glad you pushed him to it because he's really enjoying it. And I well, moment. I don't, I don't think people. 
You there? No. Oops, she's frozen again. Oh, she froze again? Okay, no, you're, you're back. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't I think... Okay. I don't... Can I ask you a question real quick? And then we'll get back. Okay, so... Spiritual Empress, your channel is really new. Can you tell yeah. us real quick, you know, what led to your spiritual awakening? How did you become awake in all this crap of amnesia that's around us? Um... Well, I've, I've clearly been weird for my entire life. Wow. <laughs> I've always been different. Um, I got my first astro deck when I was eight. Um, you know, the, the thing about Aquarius is you got to understand where the God complex comes from. Um, with Aquarius, like growing up your whole life, you're told how different and how strange you are. And um, the thing with Aquarius is you come out of that still excelling and proving people wrong. So if you're dealing with an Aquarius later in life, you have to understand what you're dealing with. And especially in the age of Aquarius, there's a lot of power in that. But um, I've always, I mean, I was playing with astral travel and things like that since I was eight. I snuck my first astro deck. I bought it from Spencer's, which is a story I really shouldn't have been going in anyway <laughs> when I was eight. But you know how girls like, you know, sneak things from their parents. But I got an astro deck. Um, I've just always been interested in the spiritual and um always had a wonderment for the world but what really brought brought the empress energy on in me was getting out of a relationship with a narcissist um and you just you realize like looking back at everything that had happened that you were the sparkle in the situation and um you just come into you know anybody who's suffering from a relationship in a narcissist it's it's very hard to find it or to see it at first um, it's very devious, um, but even those kinds of behaviors and stuff, people manipulating, and um, that's just not staying around. So for that, that that was probably that was when the the final Empress energy came in was was in that situation was was leaving that and and choosing to I don't know get out. I don't. <laughs> But it was, um, yeah, that was that was the final straw. But I've always been like gifted intuitively and things like that. I just always I've done it since I was a child. Um, I've always oh I used to sleepwalk really bad, and I would my mom would call me Houdini because somehow I would get out of the house at like two in the morning when I was two, and um, go wander the streets of California. So she she um, I've always had something going on. I've always experienced night attacks and things like that. So I don't remember my first experience. My first experience ever, I remember almost drowning um, when I was, I think, four. Four. So, I mean, it's just kind of always been there. But it's just we've had to mask ourselves a little bit because humans can't handle it. Um, but th that's changing now to where they're seeing. So it's really cool. <clears throat> And, and I want to say about Naya, she's also February 8th. So all of you are between that 1st and the 9th. Yeah, it's very special. Um, it's bringing them. Um, I feel like logic has ran so long. And, and logic is fine, but uh, truly feminine energy is nurturing and um, having healthy emotion, emotional balance, I guess. Um, and, and the value in emotions, you know, the, that feeling that you're weak if you're emotional or... Um, you know, don't allow it to run your life. But I mean, you know, it's it's the true communication of the bridge between logic and intuition. So, um, yeah, that deacon's very, very special. I don't meet a lot of them. And especially February 5th, there's, I like never meet them. <laughs> so it's very weird that we ran into you and he goes, Herbert, he's on the 8th. And I said, no way. <laughs> but, but is it really that strange? I don't think so. <laughs> um, well, I've met two Aquarians in my whole life and I'm 58 before this. Two. Wow, that's it. Ever and one and one was a, I don't know astrology stuff like you guys do, but it was what I would say an Aquarian that lived on the dark side, the low level, scariest person I've ever met in my life. And the other guy, I was uh, uh, waiting for a friend who was a bartender at a bar, and I started talking to this guy who was sitting next to me, and we talked for about thirty minutes. By the end of the conversation. Our conversation was going like this. You know that? And then I know. But then you know what? Yes, I do. <laughs> and I was like, about 10 minutes into that, we both stopped and looked at each other. And I squinted my eyes and I said, what sign are you? <laughs> and he said, Aquarian. And I went, that's why we don't actually have to finish our sentences. No. Um, because you just know. 
And you said um, you said something when you're talking about how hard it is to convey certain concepts to humans because of the way that communication moves so quickly in the others through the air. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's multi, I don't know what it is, it's simultaneous, commu constant communication right. where we're answering each other the thing we hadn't even asked yet. And right. It's, right. When you're trying to communicate uh, deep, deep knowledge or things like that, it is very difficult to to humanize it um yeah. in a way that their brains can understand it because yeah. it's not human it's how the how the angels you can imagine being in 10 different conversations at the same time that's how it is and you said that kind of in your nde experience where you know you you're like we don't communicate things we use symbols or we use you know whatever um that's just we we know things all of it completely at once yeah, there is, there is no misunderstanding. There is no lying. There is just an instant understanding of the other in entity, yeah. and it's instant in the now. And so to bring it here and put it into linear time space and slow it down into human speech, and to and I'm forever doing that too. That you do somebody will start to say something, and I already know what they're. I I not only know what they're getting ready to say, I know what they were going to say for the next fifteen minutes. Right. So it's like, it's a game. <laughs> and so I, I like jump in too fast. G man, I've done it with him over and over, okay. and I, I'm forever losing track of where I am. Right. And going, okay, where am I in linear thought? What have they actually said? And what did I actually say? <laughs> and I get lost, and I'm going, okay, where were we? So I have to go. <laughs> oh, yes, slow. Down. Yeah, people think we're ditzy and we're not. We're really not ditzy. We're just five, five, ten steps ahead of the conversation. Exactly. And then you exactly. jump, you jump in and you confuse them because they hadn't had the thought yet, but you knew they were going to say it. And then now you're confused because you think you're a crazy person when really you're not. <laughs> so yeah, they think we're ditzy, but really you have to imagine what like where our heads are in a million places at once, and especially if you're spiritually connected or anything like that, it's very hard to convey to. Um, just the human population, really, really deep concepts. So um, I got it was, it was tricky before I died, but after I died, it became right. darn near impossible. Right. Because my, because by that time I was 48. So and, and the older I got, the more, the better I got at the conversation. So it was no longer 10 conversations. It was a thousand things I was going on in my head. So then whenever I died, and figured out I could come back and I could run basically infinite ones at the same time, then it became absolutely impossible to communicate with people. And mm -hmm. I and I was a nurse. <laughs> oh that wow. worked out really nicely. So basically in the process of trying to figure out what was going on, because I didn't know before I died, I didn't know what was going on. I just was living most of the time I just kept my mouth shut is what I did. And I looked around and I just kept my mouth shut and worked a lot. But then whenever <laughs> I came back, I just had to decide. And I started doing the whole thing of just shutting up. But the stuff I came back with was so cool mm -hmm. that I just couldn't not say something because I wanted to at least tell somebody. Right. And then it got so that I was dealing with a thousand conversations. Plus I was asking questions of the other side and getting the answers at the same time at wicked fast rate and mm -hmm. trying to rehab and trying to take care of my kid. So it became an absolute, it came, became insanity for about four or five years yeah. before I got, it became overwhelming. And then I learned to pull back and start to control it. Right. And of course now it's been 10 years later. Now I'm really good at it, but but I tell people, I say, you think you want your amnesia gone, but you're wrong. You're wrong. Your amnesia <laughs> serves you well. Let it let it go gradually. You don't want you don't know you do not want what I've got. You just think you do. Mm -hmm. Because it's a tricky place living here, but it's even trickier when you can remember every single thing from the other side, where every question is answered, where you know what all the other games look like, and you're stuck here in this body. It, it's not so much fun. Do you have experience with the military or um, anything like that in the astrals or in um, in uh, or on the other side with the games? Well, in 4D, I spent a lot of time 
looking around in 4D because <laughs> once I went to a certain level when I died, I dropped into now time. And so in now time, I got to see all of Earth's experience at once. So every single being, every single thing that happened during the Earth experience, Gaia's experience, I saw it once. I knew it once. Oh. So I knew the whole game. Now, mm -hmm. at that point, I think the difference between my NDE and others is a lot of people, I think, stop to wonder. Somewhere in their NDE, they stopped and they thought about something or they wanted to they were curious about something, and I never did that. I just I just looked at something, knew it instantly in the now, and then I want I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. <laughs> and because of that, I just went further than anybody I know, and I've looked and asked and scanned the planet for anybody that can talk about the stuff that I saw. Because to me, this place, this game, was the least in interesting. I got that in an instant. I went, okay, I got it. I know what you guys are doing there. Cool game. Gotta go. <laughs> and then I went out and checked out a whole bunch of other games. So, and way beyond that. Mm -hmm. And everybody's really still real focused on this game. And uh, most of the military stuff and all of those beings, most of them are in the fourth dimension. And right. it's the same old stuff is here. It's the same thing repeated on a bigger level. It becomes multidimensional, it becomes uh, multi-universal, but it's the same game, right. and I'm already bored with it, so. Right, well, and that's weird you said that today, because I said I said to uh, someone today, and I said, uh, you know, it has to, the world has to change now, because I could feel it, I could physically feel it, and I said it has to change because it's boring. This is boring, and I said, aren't you bored that this is just it, that this is it? you like this is it <laughs> so. now that I, I get I get what they're doing I did see what I call the long-term humans I did see why they do it over and over again but the being that I am I'm uh, what I call an energy being there is no name for it there is no planet I'm from it's way outside this game we don't have names we recognize each other vibrationally um, we don't have words that's too slow. Uh, it's way outside this game. And that's what, and it's big, much, much bigger than here. So I, I can look at the entities that play this game because they are into looking at tiny, tiny details and tiny, tiny changes. And it's fascinating. And vibrationally, when you look at it vibrationally outside of physicality and outside of the skin suit, this human skin suit, it is absolutely phenomenally intricate, okay. intricately created, and uh, to look at it vibrationally, it is fascinating, but it is not my gig at all. I mean, I came to help Gaia, and that's it. I'm gone, but I'm very grateful for all the beings that enjoy doing this so that I can experience it in the now because right. it's phenomenal, but Lord knows I do not understand how they can lifetime after lifetime, for millions of lifetimes, slog through this. But I am living right now with G-Man, who is a serious long-term human. Second oldest one that I've ever met. And it, it is fun to stand next to him because he does see this creation, the bad, the good, in fascination. So it's, it, it's, been a great great gift to me to be able to stand next to him and see it through his eyes so that I can see the fascination that they have it doesn't change the fact that I don't care for the game and I won't be back uh, I'm doing what I'm doing and then I'm going on to doing things that I prefer but it is it does make it easier to see why they do what they do through his eyes because they are absolutely fascinated by this stuff yeah it, I think it, it, it has to deal with what, like you said, I, I'm more of a, I don't know if it's an energy type or non-energy type, whatever it is. I, I don't know. Like when people ask you where you're from or what you are, because I, I was in this, I was in the psychic community here in Phoenix and I left because it was a lot of that just kind of like romanticism um, about, you know, everything is love. Everything is this. And, you know, and I'm like, no, I mean, it should be love. That would be great. But there's a lot of dark stuff here. And then when I would ask questions, because when I opened myself to healing, I was having experiences with 
dark things. I wasn't doing what my teachers taught me. I didn't know what I was doing. And, um, you know, then they're like, well, you're from Lumeria or you're from Atlantis or you're from, you know, and I just felt like, a, no, I don't know where I'm from and that's okay. But, like, you know, I was always, even in the, even in the psychic community, I was weird. <laughs> even in the psychic community, I would ask questions they wouldn't know answers to. And I'm like, well, this is what I'm experiencing. And my mentors would give me some fluff answer anyway, which I hate that. I hate when people don't know and don't just say that they don't know. Um, so when you said you're just some sort of energy being, I'm like, that, that must be what I am. Cause <laughs> I don't seem to resonate with a, with a title or a label or a box. You know what I mean? <laughs> and by the yeah. way, Naya well, can- I've, I've watched, I've watched some of those, the new agers. And to me, it looks like, another religion in their stuff and and when you when i went outside the game what i saw was that that it's simply in the skin suit that you're interpreting things as good and bad light and dark anyway in reality all of it is beautiful and wonderful you Mm -hmm. just people here have created a circumstance so that it feels bad or feels good to play a game but in reality all vibrations are wonderful and cool. You yeah. just need an, an artificial game living in a skin suit. And those are really arbitrary vibrations. They're arbitrary vibrations that you've set up so that this skin suit doesn't like these and it does like these in order <laughs> to create a contrasting experience to live like a human and not a god. So if you go way, way, way outside the game, you know that. And mm-hmm. there's nothing... That none of what they say, it, it's just like, well, you've only gone so far. You, yeah. You've not gotten any further. I can always tell where somebody has gone, which is fine. Any part of the game is good. Wherever you're playing is perfect. Yeah. But it's not where I've seen. It's right. just not all that is. And I went way the F out there. And <laughs> I know there's way more. Yeah. So I, I know it. I can feel it. I instinctively know that I just went so far and then I had a thought and came back into the body and cussed a lot. But (laughs) so if you don't understand how big this thing really is, if you're still caught up with angels and aliens, you're still in this game, heavy duty. And this game is just one teeny tiny game of infinite games. And if you don't understand that, once you understand that there are infinite games and this, everything that you know is just one of them, then the thought of even being a Lemurian, that's just still just a role you're playing within this one game. Right. It's You're way beyond this. And when I tell people over and over again, you are a God, you are a God. I mean, biblical, all-knowing, all-creating, can do whatever you want, God. Right. You just have forgotten that. Yeah. And it's way bigger than being on a planet or being from Lemuria or a Pleiadian. That's just another part that you're playing to forget that you're a god. Because gods aren't from anywhere. They're God. And I've told people that that that's really what protects you is just in that knowingness of that you are, you know, you are a creator. You are, you know, these things. And you'd said something about the angels. And when, um, and no offense, I don't like to bash on anybody, but when Doreen Virtue came out with all that angel, angel marketeering like it, the, all it was was a you know just a thing to suck money out of people and oh gabriel is with you and oh michael is in the you know and it's like i'll get the, i'll get certain energy signatures of those kind of beings or those entities but i would i would never um anybody who needs to call on a thing to protect them or call on a thing like you're the god so why would you need to call on call? A, yeah exactly why would you call and it's so funny because at first in the community, they would look at me and they're like, well, you don't have your crystals. You don't have your, you're not praying before you do the reading. Be- I said, because the energy is here. What do I need to ask somebody to give me good messages for? I'll give you the good messages. So, exactly. it's just so quick. when you said that, I was like, anytime you give your power to something or need to ask it for assistance, you're giving some power. So, and now, now, not only that. And, and all of those, I, and I... I have I have talked to Jehovah God. I've talked to the Jesuses. I've talked to the angels. They're all in 4D, what I call 4D. They're all there. It's a big place. It's a very big place. No, yeah. Now, I use crystals, right, but up. all of this stuff 
in the essences, that's for the human body because I suck. I like the crystals, yeah. Yeah. Because in it, but it's not for spiritual. It's absolutely no. to try to keep this human body standing up and not running into things. Okay, right. Naya. Because I run it badly. Okay, Naya. <laughs> All right. Okay, man. Sorry. Thank you. <sighs> so I got I got two quick comments, and then I'll let you get back. Uh, first off, I've had a near death experience as well, but I don't remember anything. Naya said I did. So I just I'm two months into my uh, car crash. I don't know if you've been following my channel two months. I was hit head on by a drunk driver, and uh, I didn't see that. No. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm I'm still in a wheelchair right now. I'm rehabbing. That's why Naya's down here. She's helping me uh, with rehab because she's been a nurse for 25 years. Wow. So. Uh, she said that I will recall. She said I went out pretty far. I don't remember anything, but as I physically heal, then I think I'll start to meditate more on it. But I want to say that. But also, you know, you talk about uh, you know calling upon Gabriel and all that. I'm totally with you because I mean, like, who who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? <laughs> You're a god. <laughs> I mean, Ghostbusters, right? And I, mean, I don't get I don't get this <laughs> I don't get the New Agers because they say that you're a creator god. Well, how can they say you're a creator god and then tell you to go call somebody? Yeah. That makes no sense. Yeah. Ghostbusters. And there's no logic in that. <laughs> Either you're a god or you're not a god. You're a god. You don't call on anybody. You are a effing god. Well, and it's funny when you're talking about your religious background and your upbringing. I was very lucky in the way that my family had no religious or spiritual really direction or they didn't make me choose. I could be what I wanted to. So... Um, I did decide to, because I knew I was spiritual, and I knew I knew there was something bigger, or I was something was not right. And so I did dabble in a lot of religion, and I did get myself baptized when I was 15, and I just saw the nastiness. I loved church for the spiritual. I could feel that there was energy there. Um, but I liked the idea of connecting with a higher power. I liked that, but the words that were coming out of the mouth and, and the things that in the text and um, people were reading things and agreeing to things and praying things that they had no idea what they actually meant. And, um, you know, I, I saw the nastiness in the politics and in, in religion and things like that. So um, I walked away from it very quickly, but I did get, I got myself baptized. But when you're seeing the calling upon and, and then, you know, all the money, we have a very big um, church community out here, and it just sucks. It's a money sucker. That's all it is. It's a Jesus magic show, I call it. <laughs> they go to church, and they put on a show with a band, and, um, you know, people just give their money. So, um, yeah, as far as, like, religion and giving your power over to things, that's not something that I, that's not a game I play. <laughs> so, yeah, me neither. Me yeah. neither. I can feel it. I can feel it. Although... Now I kind of look around and I'm just kind of fascinated with, because ultimately they were asked to do this. They were asked to make the toughest game ever so that 7 billion gods could forget that they're gods. Yep. And let me assure you, it is tough to get a god to forget they're a god. So <laughs> people want to know why it's so tough here. It's because you're a god. Yeah, <laughs> of course it's going to be tough here. So why are you going that's to... Why, that's why they did it. <laughs> but the only way you could do it, they wanted to forget that they were God. That is the game, after all. Yeah. So that was the agreement, after all, so that they could come and live not like gods. We can live like gods all day long. That's what we normally do. If you came here, you wanted to forget that. you wanted, Or you wanted to help die, or one or the other. So I'm just sitting around, I'm going, what do you expect? But... But still, people, new age people, you're a god. But we're really upset about the government. Well, how uh, else did you expect it to work? <laughs> you, how else were you supposed to do it? You're going to have to convince these people that they're worthless, low-life nothings in order for them to forget they're gods. Now you're upset about it? I look at it, and I'm just fascinated. I'm fascinated that they pulled it off. I'm fascinated at the way they did it. The, all of the all the intricate things that had to be created to make this happen. I know why beings come and play this game. I remember being on the other side. I remember being with beings and everybody sitting around, including me, going, that would never work on me. No way would I ever <laughs> forget who I am. That would never work. I was sitting there, like in a pub, as beings went, ah, I'm going to try it. And they'd pop down and pop back up and they'd go, holy shit, you cannot believe it. It really worked. 
it really works. Some other bee would sit there and go, nah, that wouldn't work on me. Pop, pop, back up. Oh, my God. And that's what happened. Because every, nobody, the first time they come down here, nobody thinks it will work on them. Nobody. No. Nobody. Yeah. And then people start, the ones that pop down there, they go, oh, i got to do it again. It's kind of like being addicted to the, fair, uh, the, the roller coaster. I need it bigger. I need it better. I need it more intense. That's how come it happens. There's nothing wrong here. There's nothing bad here. It's a game. If you don't like it, it's not hard to leave. The yeah. human bodies are not very tough, not very hard to kill one off. You don't <laughs> like it, leave. No big deal. The only people, the only reason everybody's afraid of death is it's a part of the game. <laughs> to be afraid of it. To be afraid yeah. of it. If you not- remember, if you had, trust me, I have no amnesia. I have no fear of death. It makes it much harder to stay here by having those two things. Because I know without a doubt, death is no big deal. I know that I'm not going to feel a darn thing. And I know it's a whole lot more fun over there. It makes it a challenge every day to stay here. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why they do it is because people went, oh, no, we got to get rid of that memory. We got to be afraid. Otherwise, people were just at the early stages. Beans were coming here going, oh, hell no. We're gone. And they left. So they had to come up with a plan to keep people here to finish playing the game. It's genius. Absolute God genius what has been created here. Mm-hmm. If you look at it through the right perspective. You want to be angry and fussy about it. Well, then you can do that. That's part of the game, too. But I know I'm a God. So to me, I'm playing with a lot of gods going, whoa, we are just damn good. And yeah. We're just damn good. Well, and all of the other games out there are just as amazing, if not nearly, they're not nearly as painful, but they're just as amazing out there, and there's so many of them. And it's funny, too, because once you get that understanding of it, then there's no restrictions or rules, and those those don't apply to you. So it's mm-hmm. like if you're going, th- you're going through life, and you're walking by, and somebody goes... Well, you can't do it this way. And you just go, I'm, I, and I literally will say that to my friends and they go, how do you do that? And I said, darling, we're gods. We don't wait for things. We're gods. No. We don't. <laughs> if, if you want to play, the, it's always true. It's always it's, true. Because then those limits, if, if you want to play, you, you go ahead and play. But I am heading a very specific direction. This okay. is where I'm going. If you'd like to hear about it, I'll tell you. If you don't, fine. Right. The good news is, Nobody can mess it up, ever. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do. You cannot mess it up. It's impossible. Where are you going? From a dead person's point of view, that's good news. Where are you going? Where are you heading? There is no, you're not heading. That's a linear time You just said it yourself. What you're doing is creating and experiencing. (laughs) It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're creating and experiencing, and it will be cool. It will be cool, I promise you. It may not appear to to humans in skin suits, <laughs> but I guarantee you, on the other side, it's all cool. No, wait a minute. Oh, cool. no, you, you said that you're heading a specific direction, and if you want to tell us, you'll tell us. So tell us. Oh, I'm going to 5D. I'm marching. I'm not paying any attention to any of this <laughs> stuff. I'm like, I don't care what everybody else is doing. I'm going to 5D. And I have, I know instinctually, even though I'm not allowed to know certain things by my higher self, because I'd be pissed, off, <laughs> and I know me. So I get to know them you know, shortly before I do them. And I know I'm slowed down because I've got things to do, but I'm not allowed to know what they are. But I know they show up when they're supposed to, and, but I keep plotting. And that, because I know that for me, because I know too much, it's the only option. Right. It's the only option. Because once you know what I know, I don't have any other choice. I've got to keep doing that or die until I die or till I get there. Because it's my only option. I just know too much. Well my I can't pet- just I just can't talk about the weather or you know what no. we're gonna do on vacation next month anymore. I I've lost the ability to small and, talk yeah. now. So I don't have an option. Yeah, I um, I had, t- had this discussion with my uh, with my friend. They said, "Well, wouldn't you be afraid to to come out like this and say these truths and this that or the other?" And I said, "There is nothing that 
what if, what one what would I be scared of? Yeah. Two, there, two, there's nothing they can do because what are you going to do? You going to take me to jail where I can astral out of my body and <laughs> exactly. And then I'm going to also um, in the institution, I'm going to make everybody more positive and better people. And then no, so that's not good. They're not going to put me there. And then what are they going to kill me off? Because honestly, I'd much enjoy it. <laughs> much me, enjoy too. me too. Yeah. I'll volunteer. I'll volunteer. Please do. I'm right here. Yeah. I myself known. Yeah. So I'm, I'm up. The I'm up, I am up for the death card. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'll play it because yeah. it's wonderful over there. So it's just a different way of looking at things when you don't have that fear anymore. Right. right. And I just don't. I don't. I don't care. This is a yeah. game. It is all a game, and there's way more out there. I just don't take any of it seriously anymore. Right. Right. I just can't because I know that it's just a game. So I just can't. The illusion is gone. <laughs> uh, you know, I am I am out of the game now. I'm just trying to walk through the skin suit to get out to go home, <laughs> do my job and go home. <laughs> so. And by the way, uh, Megan, you know she yeah. she does have total recall, and uh, the interviews that I've done with her, the one that was banned, the one that you watched. By the way, that's banned all of Europe. But uh, if you have any questions, like Bulgaria, Bulgaria, and so, some. Other <laughs> well, I, I had a I had a list of all the countries. There was, there was quite a bit, like the big ones, uh, England, Switzerland, Sweden, all those. But there, there are probably some places that's it's legal. But the thing is, if you have any question for Naya about anything, you can just ask her because when it, when we when her and I do interviews, she doesn't know any of these questions, and I'll ask her all these wacky off the wall questions, you know, and she just. Boom, give us an answer. Well, she's channeling. That's what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> she's when a, you, well, I don't like to say channeling mainly because that implies somebody's between me and nothing's between me. I don't channel through anybody else. I'm just, I'm just, I just know how to answer what all of you guys know how to do anyway. And she's really good at it anyway. She probably knows, she does it herself. So she probably doesn't have anything she doesn't answer herself because she does it already. I can tell. So and it's it's just you just stop thinking and everybody can do this. I, I, it's not because I died. It's just because I learned to shut up. And when you shut up and you ask the question, you will instantly get the answer. You just got to be open to hear it and believe it. Everybody is can do it. Anybody can do it. They just start thinking and go, well, is that really right? Or then the ego starts working and going, well, that doesn't sound right because of this past and this book that I read. And then you start messing with the truth. But the truth is, everybody gets the right answer when you ask. You just don't listen. People well, don't listen. Well, I listen. You, well, Naya, you said that, okay, you're not channeling. So when someone does ask a question and they get that answer real quick, like, where does that come from? It's an it, comes from it, it, it comes from their tie directly to the all that is. Yeah. It comes from the all that is. It comes from us. It comes from who we really are. So there's nothing in between the person and that oh. if you just relax and become and trust. So you just ask the question of who we are, the all it is, and all of the answers are there, whether you call it a Kashuk record or whatever, I don't care what you want to call it. But to me, it's the all that is. The all that is knows everything. So all you got to do is ask yourself who you are, a part of the all that is, and it will answer you. But it will not force its answer on you. You get to choose whether to pay attention or not. And a part of 3D was not. It was using ego and past and future and linear fear and all of that stuff to forget that connection. But you will never lose that connection completely because you're a part of all that is. So the sooner you figure that out and shut up, the stronger that, that connection becomes. And the more you listen to it, the louder it becomes. And the more you listen to it, the louder it becomes until there's nothing else. I don't pay any attention to it at all to my ego now. I just laugh because the answers come in so much stronger because I believe in them now. So law of attraction works. I send more energy to that kind of interaction and I get it much more, much stronger. So I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter to me what your answer is because you create your own reality. I get the answer that I get in my timeline, in my moment. I'll also give you your answer, but that'll only work in this moment. You can right. change it any time. Right. That's, which is the reason why psychics get in so much trouble. Because most psychics are absolutely 
are, are real. The trouble is they have no idea about multiple timelines and mo multiple aspects. So they'll ask a person, the person will say, well, am I going to get, am I going to have three kids? How many kids am I going to have? And the psychic in that moment will say, you're going to have three. And they're absolutely right. But then the person goes, well, I don't know if I really want three. Bam, they're over on a timeline where they don't have three. Then the person comes back and goes, oh, psychic's not telling the truth. It's simply because they don't understand. You're not going to get me saying that stuff. You move through timelines and aspects billions of times a second. What you want is up to you. Choose. It has nothing to do with me. I have no control over it. I control me and me only. I can tell you where you are with me right this second, but not where you're going to be a second later. It's none of my business. It's well, your station, think, not mine. Um, I think with the, the free will thing, too, what people don't realize that what applies to that is not just making decisions and doing physical actions. It's putting energy behind thoughts. So, yeah. like, the free will in that, like you just said, to elaborate on that, it's just, like, you can go... Well, do I want three kids? Do you know the impact of that thought is having on your future? <laughs> yeah, and it's changing you. It depends. If, if you're going, do I want three kids and you're envisioning lovely times with three kids, you're going to go to those three kids and you're going to say, wow, the psychic was awesome. If that yeah. scares you, then you're going to go, I don't know if I want three kids. Law of attraction works. You're going to go over to a timeline where you didn't and you're going to say, oh, I went to this psychic, cost me $200 and it totally was not true. And see, you create it moment to moment, whether you've got a truth, truthful psychic or a not truthful psychic. But that has nothing to do with the psychic person. They have both aspects available for you to choose from. You get to choose, always. And that's what people do not understand, that this is a, we are all together, but we are creating very individual creations. That's the point. We are a part of one. We are gods. We would never repeat ourselves. That's stupid. Why would we ever do that? <laughs> We're creating very unique creational lives, moment to moment, that aren't going to look like anybody else's. Because that's redundant and stupid. Right. We don't do that. We don't waste time. <laughs> we do not waste time. That is a big, the all that is, that is a big thing. We never waste time. And there is so much out there for us to create with. We will never run out of time. We have all, well, even if time existed, or even the illusion of time. There's too much to play with out here. Right. We will never, ever play with it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very, very, um, very true. And um, everybody's supposed to have that experience, to have the, uh, that specific energy that's anchored here. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to... It's hard to, it's really hard to explain things sometimes because <laughs> um, it's like, like you said, I had always said that to my friends and I said, I will not be back down here. <laughs> you know, I just vibrate too high um, and I'm too much of a, if you watch any of my other videos, I just did one on being a transmuter and I transmute negativity around me and you were talking about how, you know, when something happens to you, you just laugh and that's the energy in the moment what you're allowing it to have the effect on you. So if it's supposedly a negative um, behavior or anything like that, I honestly, I think negativity and I think pettiness and I think mean people are hilarious. I think they're funny. And I and you said play the game. I like to play with that. I Oh, do tell Mr. Crazy Person. <laughs> and, um, you know, so it, it helps me. It's really good in customer service. I, I do really well with customer service just because diffusing that, it becomes so easy. Um, you have angry people who run up to you and you just diffuse that immediately. Um, it's really a gift, but it's like you said, it's everything that you put behind it. It's all the energy that's behind it. Um, and it's all up to you. It's your game. So if I don't, it's, it's funny because I go, I'm like, I would say that to my friends and they laugh, but they go, it's so true because you just have magic around you. And I go, because I am magic. I, you know, it's just, you know, because we are gods. Uh yeah, yeah, right, right. God are gods. Now you can choose. Now I, I say it a little bit differently. I don't diffuse anything. What I do is I immediately. Yeah, it's like I don't know. I don't know. If I, I say. That. I, I go to a different aspect of them. That's how I see it. I say, Nah, I don't like this version of you. I want a better version that I like. Okay, <laughs> we'll just go over that one, and it goes away. So I change to a different aspect of That's that person. Cool. I like that because one. Because I don't control, you can't control anybody else. I can't control anybody else's energy, but I can move, and I can move wicked fast to find what I want. 
or get away. So, so exactly. So if you are something I don't like, I just go bye and leave. <laughs> and go enjoy yourself with this game, but I'm leaving, not my game, and I just leave. And yep. and things are it works. It, that is the way to communicate it to others, and it works for me. It's the best I can do to explain it because. Usually when I'm doing that, I'm in the now. So I'm trying to explain what I'm doing to people who are linear time space, which is almost impossible when you're doing shit in the now. Yeah. Because it's so <laughs> hard to explain. But that's the best way that I know to explain how I do it. Because mm -hmm. I'm very, very precise and getting better and better at narrowing my timelines and the aspects that I will deal with. And I'm getting less and less patient There's with no the lower patience. vibration. Yeah, there's no patience. And it was like... um. It, I mean, it had to happen eventually, but the eventually just became too dragged out and too long and, you know, too um, that divine feminine. It's just like we're done. And, you know, well, there are plenty and plenty of plenty of timelines where it's not happening. There's many that are going to end very badly. There's all kinds of uh, aspects of the planet where. Where there are aliens that destroy the planet, there are Armageddon ones. There are all kinds of options that you can go and join. I just know exactly where they are, and I have no intention of doing so. Um, but they're welcome to play. I mean, the Earth will leave. You can play it out however you want. If you want to play it out on the Rapture version, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. You can play it out on the Jesus coming down and floating up to him. You can... You can come and jump on a spaceship and watch the Earth blow up. There's all kinds of versions she's got out there. You can I've choose. Not, but there is opinion. no way I'm going to be there. But you're welcome. Anybody's yeah. welcome to go play those. I'm not going to do it. But Yeah, we went to, I went to, I did have an experience with somebody who's going to be experiencing kind of an Armageddon kind of sort of situation. But um, I went in Astrals and they were there and it was like that. It, the sky was fire. And um, I was trying to collect, I think, collect shields. They had shields because they were killing people and there were shields to be collected or something like that to save because we needed to save these shields. And, um, you know, I had some, this other person was in there just standing looking out at this Armageddon. And I said, you know, this isn't real, right? Like, <laughs> you know, this isn't real. <laughs> I was just playing to me a game like it was a, a shield. I had to collect shields kind of game, you know, like a video game. Yeah, but yeah. you know, the, the ones that want to play it, and there are some, you know, there's been a lot of monotheistic religions that with that energy, there's a lot, it's going to play out, because there's too much energy, it's got to diffuse, right. and there's been an awful lot of bad aliens, end of the world movies, and a lot of energy has been sent that way, so oh, they yeah. will play out, they have every right to play it out however they want to, the right. end result is Gaia will be gone, and they can see her leaving any way they want. They can see her blowing up. They can see her disappearing. They can see her whatever. She's leaving. And they can play it however they want. I'm saying right here and riding her where she's going. But they can do whatever they want. And I've seen them all. And, well, you know, humans are dramatic. You know, they like drama. And the long-term humans have got some fantastic, massive, end-of-the-world scenarios that they play out. Um, and it will add to the whole beautifully. And I, I think will that's enjoy part of them being bored. I think, huh? part of them be, I think that's part of them being bored too, though. You know, they, they can lie to themselves all day long and say that they're happy or that this, that, or the other. But yet you're creating these um, entertainment boxes when you're not just living. <laughs> but, um, you know, they're creating they, these scenarios I, to be afraid of, you know. <laughs> I, I watch them and it's like, for instance, I'm a brute force person person. I mean, right. if you want a wall torn down, I'll tear it down faster than anybody you know and enjoy it. But if you want me to put take a watch apart and right. put it back together, you just as might as well just throw away the watch. It's never going to happen. <laughs> and long-term humans to me are like that. They're the watch makers and yeah. fixers. They like the tiny details. And I'm energy, which means I couldn't care less. Thank goodness they're here and a part of the whole, and thank you for being there. So I don't have to fix the watch. But they will continue to tear it down. I've already talked to the creator of this game. There's about a trillion more planets since Earth was the first one that are already in 3D for new entities, and they're going to go further. 
And there is no doubt in my mind. Now, 3D is an arbitrary human number. In reality, it's a vibration in the middle of the all that is. They will continue to take it down forever. And Lord knows I will never be back to this game for that. Do not <laughs> understand them. The next friend that calls me that says, hey, I need help getting out of my go, call someone else. I'm done. <laughs> But they'll keep playing this game because to them they are fascinated. It's just like humans that they think they know it all right now. But in a hundred years they'll look back and they'll go, man, we didn't know anything. And that is how these this game is played. They'll keep tearing it apart and making it into tinier and tinier fractals. Amazingly so. But it's just not my gig. And they'll keep it up. I don't. I, it's not my gig, but I'm amazed at what they do. I, I will. Hats off. Love them dearly. I do not understand it. I will not be back. I like my game better. But, uh, yeah, I, this is way too slow and tedious. But that is my nature anyway. I mean, it's my nature as a human, and it's my nature as a being. I like fast and big. Me too. And a lot of it. And these guys are the opposite. But then we need that for the all that is. The all that is has all of us right. doing different specialities. But, you know, Megan is right. Speaking about long-term humans, we do get bored, so we create these weird scenarios, you know. Let me come down here and experience what it's like to be gay or bi or trans. we gotta, <laughs> we got to put these yep. twists on them, you know. Like, yep. hey, we can't just live just a boring, you know, normal go life. we got to just, you know, like Naya calls us ex extreme sports nuts. You know, and that's, that's <laughs> yeah. really, we got to go up to Mount Everest or we got to, you know. Yeah, it's not enough. It's not enough to come back. For, for a while, it was a because they're fads on this on this. They thing. are, yeah. They're fads, and and the, one of the fads a long time ago was to lose one sense, and then it was two senses, and then it was three senses, and then they developed super senses, and then they went well. That's like counterintuitive. So there was a phase where they went through a lot of paraplegics and quadriplegics, and then they did the gay thing, and they're always throwing a, a wrench in it and go, no, not just be human. Let's do human with a twist. So somebody will come up with a twist, and then a bunch of other entities will go, like that twist, but I'm going to add my twist to the twist. And that's how it gets this complex, which is why this game is without a doubt, without a doubt, I mean, the whole game, not just planet Earth, even though Earth thinks it's all that and then some. I mean, the whole game is the most watched game that I could find. And believe me, I went to more than any human could even think about because it is fascinating to watch. It's much more fascinating for me to watch than be here, I guarantee you that. But the people that come and do this, the entities, they do it over and over and over. They just keep going twist. Now, G-Man, whether he knows it or not, he's been doing this a very long time and he is fascinated. But his gig is he's going to start a whole new game because he thinks... That because right now you can't get to 3D without really um, experiencing pain, yeah. and he is absolutely convinced that he can create a game with 3D and contrast and amnesia without the intense emotional and physical pain. So I did tell him because I've talked to his higher self. So I did tell him that if he can pull that off, that I might come play in his game for a lifetime. <laughs> <Cool. time. laughs> But, well, but I'm not doing this. I, I'm just not into pain and anguish. It's just and not my thing. They love the contrast of it. They really do. They love the not knowing that they're gods and then wishing to God it and being in intense distress and then having everything again. They love that contrast. Um, I've seen it. I've experienced it. Uh, yeah, it's just not, it's not the thing for me. It's cool, but it's not all that. I like my thing better. But you know what? If all of us like the same thing, we wouldn't be nearly as good at that in all that is. We all need to have something different that we like. It's the true man show. The true man show. True yeah. man. <laughs> true man. That's right. We're, watching it. We're just watching it. <laughs> <laughs> so now most of the time whenever I look around, I'm not trying to fix anybody or help anybody or change anybody. they got to pretty much reach for me because I'm pretty much watching. I do a lot of watching. I watch, and I can see vibrationally on every level now. So I'm watching 
Uh, I'm watching what's going on for two reasons. Uh, in Fascination, but I have to watch that because I, I want my timelines. So I have to watch in Fascination and then go, okay, I've watched enough of this. Now I want to go over to here. And my daughter does that too. We do it together a lot. So we keep each other on task because I've told people it is 4D is fascinating. And if you think there were toys in 3D, you have not seen anything. 4D is way, way bigger. There's way more toys, way more things for good to go. Ooh, cool. So I really try not to look too much. Do you guys uh, I think that's what the game? Huh? Do you know the Sims game? Yeah. Stephanie, my daughter, huge <laughs> Sims game player. Huge. Okay. So, so what I equate the 4D to is when you play Sims and you have the true struggles, right? That's a 3D. You got to go to work. You got to pay your bills. You got to work really hard to get the nice furniture and stuff for the Sims. Um, but what then they'll come out with are cheat codes that give you access to just infinite furniture. Yep. Anything you want, that's 4D. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I like that. But on top of that, you got to add that here you've got... Um, school, your teachers, your job, mm -hmm. the religions tried to tell you what to do. In 4D, it's way more because mm -hmm. now you've got way more aliens, way more trying to convince you that their way is the right way. So right. it's way bigger. Right. And you've got to, you've got to sort now it's all comes down to the same bloody thing, but they're all trying to get your energy, your money, your following. It's the same exact game, only way, 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 way bigger. And I am so not interested at that. But they do have very interesting toys. I mean, it is cool to see a machine that you can just push a button and you have a perfect meal. I mean, it is cool <laughs> yeah. to step here and teleport somewhere else. It'd be very easy to get sidetracked. So I watch and then I go, yeah, but I'd rather just do it myself. I have so in 5D is I do it all myself. Yeah. And I play with other gods that know they can do it themselves, so there's no more of this hogwash of pushing <laughs> you thing. Right. And I'm kind of tired of that, too. <laughs> G-Man's tired. No. G-Man's tired, too. <laughs> yeah, we're tired of all... We're, everybody's tired of this damn game. It's getting older. <laughs> this is my, yeah, la this is my last roll. I'm out of steam. I'm about out of steam. Yeah. So I'm going to cut out of you. Out. No, yeah, before you do that, continue to talk. yo yo no no wait. Before you do that, I need to make an intro. So let me stop this recording and I'll make an intro. So don't go nowhere. Okay.